Hey, hello everybody. Uh, I'm going to do a, a strange thing, a tutorial, which is actually a remake of a previous tutorial. Uh, a long time ago I did a tutorial of um, me baking, dis uh, sculpting information I did on a mushroom, and I, I baked the maps and put them all onto the object and stuff like that using the sculpting tools. Um, well, I found out that there's some different techniques since then. There's some different things about Blender that have changed, so I thought it would be time to kind of update that. And I created some creatures for this uh, Star Wars fan film I'm working on, and I thought I would show you how I bake the details onto those guys. So let's open a tab that has uh, set that to UV image editor. I'm going to go ahead and create a UV sphere. Unfortunately, the screencast keys add-on uh, is no longer available in 2.73, so just follow along as best you can here. I'm going to set this to smooth, all right, so we get rid of that jagged edge. And then let's go ahead and create a UV map for this guy. Just tab into edit mode and hit U and go to UV Smart Project. And in this case, I'm going to accept the defaults. So have our UV image maps. If you find that these things are overlapping or something like that, then go ahead and just start modifying that if you wish. Oftentimes, I'll select them all and, and go ahead and pack the islands, average the islands, island scale, stuff like that. Uh, now we're going to create the map that is going to hold our... Uh, normal data, our, our sculpting information data, uh, because we want to do the sculpting, get all the nice details on this object, and then bake it into an image map so that we don't have to have all that heavy data bogging down our scene. So let's go ahead to new, and make sure your image is a power of two. If you're doing something like for film work or something, you might want to have it be four times this much, so you would go times four. But in this case, remember you can do math in these little fields here. Um, this is a little optional thing. Go to color, go to hex, 8080, oops, FF. Gives it that purple color. Uh, check mark 32 bit float, I do, at least. Um, the reason why I put this color in the back is because uh, this is kind of the standard uh, normal map zero value color. Instead of having it be black or something like that or transparent, that way, if for whatever reason the UVs are spilling out over onto this, Let's go ahead and hit OK. Um, you'll be getting some sort of normal map value instead of like blank, which would give you this really weird error or uh, uh, artifacts. So let's go back to object mode, go back to our modifier tab and add a multi resolution modifier and subdivide it. For what we're doing here, I'm going to do it like four is enough. Uh, I usually use uh, six for you know creating like detail on, on creatures and stuff. Go to sculpt mode. Tab into sculpt mode, and then just go ahead and start sculpting on here. We're not doing this for any real reason. We're just, I'm just doing it to show you that we can. All right, and then we can hit that to subtract, for example. Start carving in some stuff. And at some point, I'll do a tutorial on actually sculpting for reals. This is just to prove that we can bake the data onto the object. So we've done that. I'm going to go back to object mode. So we've done our sculpting. It looks is wonderful, fantastic. And now we're going to we're ready to start baking it. So uh, first thing we got to do is under the multi-res tab, set the preview to 1. Uh, you got to set the preview as low as it will go, which has got to be 1. It can't be 0. And then you got to put your sculpt and render data as high as you, you, you know, you, you sculpted it at. So if you sculpted it, most of your data, you know, your most highest resolution data at six or seven or whatever set to six or seven because it takes the the difference between these to get the uh, peaks and valleys so if you set the preview to four and the sculpt and render data to four you'll get basically almost nothing here it'll be a very watered down image we don't want that okay now we're ready to go ahead and bake so switch your camera tab you notice I'm actually in blender render you can do this under Cycles Render, but I found that if you look here under Bake, the Blender Render thing has a lot more options. So you can see you've got Full, you've got Normals, everything. We're going to set this to Normals, and we want to bake it from the Multi-Res. And I'm going to uncheck Clear uh, so that it does not take away this little uh, purple background color that we gave it. If we check mark Clear, it's going to make it be um, transparent background. Okay, and the margin, I'm going to set it uh, at the default. You should give it some sort of margin value because I noticed it needs to 
kind of blend out this stuff out into the margins of the uh, you know, where the UV islands end. Okay, so we should be ready to go. So make sure your object's selected and hit bake. And then you'll see it bake. And if you've got, make sure that you've smooth shaded it as well, because if not, you'll see the actual facets in here. Okay, then you can go ahead and save the image. And we can just go ahead and save it as test normals. Or I guess I already have one here. Let's save it over top of it. Okay, so now we are ready to uh, map this to the little guy here. So I'm just going to get rid of that. Okay, and um, now I'm going to actually go back now and, and select cycles. Now we're ready to start adding the... Uh, normal map uh, detail to this guy. All right, so I'm gonna, we have the material here and I'm gonna go and bring up a node editor window. Okay, and we'll just hit the shift Z to go ahead into our um, uh, shaded, our, our preview mode here. <clears throat> and then let's go ahead and hit the shift A and bring in a texture, image texture, and let's Select that image file that we created. All right. And then this is what is different from what, um, one of the things that was different from before was if you go in here under vector, there is a normal map node. So put the color of the uh, map that we created into the color and then drag that into the normal. And then you can start playing with the strength. So as you can see here, it's pretty much what we had uh, when we when we baked it. You know, obviously it doesn't look that great because we didn't spend a lot of time on it. But that's basically uh, how you do it. It's, it's actually once you've done it a few times, it's actually a fairly quick process. And now we have just a very oh the other thing. Well, I didn't add a uh, subdivision surface on it. You probably want to add a subdivision surface modifier to give it um, uh, you know the smooth look that you want. So basically. Uh, Let's recount this part of it, how to use the, the map. What we did, we went to Cycles Render, um, we created our material for ourselves, opened up a node editor, we added an image texture node, selected the uh, normal map that we had uh, uh, rendered, uh, we plugged that into a normal map node, which was found, oops, oops, found under vector, normal map, and we plug that into the normal of this diffuse, okay? Anything that has a normal, you can use that in, okay? And then we just went ahead and play with the strength. Uh, leave it at tangent space, because that's what you baked it at. Okay, so I hope that this helps you guys out. Um, a lot easier process than the old, uh, the old version, uh, which was a, a lot more time consuming and detailed and, and tougher. So um, hope this helps you out and good luck.